So like arrays, uh, structs are also just regions of memory. Uh, these are structured heterogeneous regions. So whereas arrays always had uh, all the elements were of the same type, they were homogeneous, uh, structs are heterogeneous and that they can have different kinds of uh, fields in them. Uh, there is a contiguous, it is still a contiguous layout, so the entire struct is laid out together in memory uh, with occasional gaps for alignment as we've seen already. Uh, the offset of each of these fields can be determined by the compiler, uh, and sometimes we call these uh, records. Uh, it's a more general term. Okay, so here's an example. So here's a struct. It contains uh, an integer, an integer, an array of two integers, uh, and then a pointer. So here's how it might be laid out in memory. So um, here's the field i, here's the field j. Uh, a is an array of two elements, so here's where they are in memory. Uh, and then uh, here is the uh, pointer p. Note that this is an 8-byte field, right, because it is a pointer field and all the pointers are 64 bits on an x86-64 machine. So uh, here's some C code and it's worth pausing for a second and thinking about how you might implement all of these in assembly if, uh, for instance, our bx is the address of x, so that's the, the base for this struct and our di is uh, just set to 1, which is just a useful uh, quantity to have here. So for instance, we can set this uh, the value of i to be 1. This is at the very beginning, so we can just you know store 32 bits into memory at the location uh, that corresponds to the beginning of the struct x. So it's worth pausing the video at this point and, and thinking about how you might implement uh, the rest of these C statements in assembly. And there are multiple correct answers, um, but see what, see what you can come up with. Okay, so let's just see some, some potential answers here. So here we could write to J using an offset of 4 from the base of the struct. Um, here uh, we're writing to the first element of A, which is again at an offset of 8. Uh, from the beginning of the struct. Uh, we could do the same sort of thing for a sub 1, but I've uh, elected here to show you uh, an example of how we might do this using scaled indexed uh, mode. So this has the benefit of working for any index in any array in a struct simply by putting the index of the item that you want so in, in a register, uh, RDI for instance, and using that as the index register. We'll still use the base of the struct as the base register, and we'll use this offset out here as the offset of the array inside the struct. So you may have been wondering why we had an offset in the scaled indexed addressing mode, and here's how, where it's useful for an array inside of a struct. So we use this as the base of the, so this is the base of the struct. This is the offset of the array inside the struct. This is the index into the array, and this is the width of the elements in the array. So it's certainly the most complicated addressing mode, but hopefully you can see now that it is the most powerful, and hopefully you can see now where you might want to use such a complicated addressing mode. And then here is uh, a final example for setting that, uh, that pointer. So as we've mentioned before, uh, there is this caveat with struct layout in that the compiler will sometimes uh, need to enforce certain alignment restrictions. So an alignment restriction requires addresses of fields to be uh, divisible by some number. So for instance, a four byte alignment means that all addresses have to be divisible by four. Uh, this is, again, not, uh, it's not immediately apparent why this might be useful, but we'll see uh, in uh, the next module why we might care about this being the case. So we specify this using an assembler directive, uh, and again, it can pr improve performance if the, the hardware matches. We can avoid this, as we mentioned before, uh, if we want to ensure that there is no padding, um, and that's what we do for the projects in this course. But in, in, in most cases, we want this to be the case. And here's an example of what this would look like uh, under different alignment schemes. So here's a struct that has an int, a char, uh, and another int. And so if we had no padding whatsoever, no alignment, uh, we could squeeze all of this into, uh, what is this, nine, yeah, nine bytes, or, yeah, nine bytes. Um, and, and, you know, the sort of the teaser about why this is bad is that it kind of splits J uh, across two um, word aligned segments. So uh, we would have to read both of these from memory in order to get J. 
Uh, and it turns out that that's, that's quite a bit slower than accessing something that is aligned within one of these segments. So if we were doing two byte alignment, we'd end up with one byte of padding here because we would want J to begin on a number that's divisible by two, so that would be six. Um, here, the numbers all need to be divisible by four, which means that we'd be inserting three bytes of padding before J, and then here is four or eight byte alignment, in which case we have to insert padding bet uh, between all of these elements. And hopefully you can see that this is, gets more and more expensive in terms of space required as you move up. So, uh, you know, at some point it becomes not really worth it, but that's part of the compiler's job is to determine where, uh, where the alignment should be uh, used. We didn't talk too much about unions in this course, but uh, a C union is also just a region of memory. It only stores one thing, um, but that thing could be multiple sizes depending on what kind of thing it is. So with a union, context is still even more important uh, because unless you know what kind of thing it is, uh, you don't really know how to interpret the bits. All of the fields start at offset zero. Uh, so if, for instance, we have a struct here that has a union inside of it that stores a char, an int, and a float, then the value could be uh, any one of those types. And so what we often do is include a type field in the struct that says, okay, at runtime right now, I'm currently storing either a char, an int, or a float. And so and when we are trying to access the data inside of this union, we can look at its associated type field in the struct and say, oh, it's a char, let's use the char field. If it's an int, let's use uh, the int field and so forth. Um, unfortunately, C doesn't have any built-in mechanism for enforcing this. And so it's perfectly fine to uh, you know, initialize this to be storing an int, to write into it using the correct union accessor, and then to read from it using uh, one of the other accessors. So this will simply print out the first byte of that integer. Uh, and here it'll just happen to be, I think this is an uppercase A or something like that. But whatever the ASCII code for this, uh, whatever this ASCII code is, that's the character that we're going to get here. We're basically reinterpreting the first byte of this integer uh, as a character. So this is in general something that's a bad idea because it, it does circumvent the type system in C. Um, we're not going to use it for this in this course, but this is occasionally useful for doing object-oriented programming in C. So C is uh, a language that doesn't have objects as part of the language design, but you can still do object-oriented programming in C and use things like polymorphism. Uh, and unions are a large part of why that is uh, or how that is possible. <laughs>